Pauline Osenya runs an allergen-free bakery, but managing food allergies isn't just part of her business, it's also her life at home. Two of her children have multiple allergies that can be fatal. I find a lot of times uh, schools and school communities, you ask them, do you have an allergy policy? And they're like, yeah, we don't allow peanuts in, in our school. And then that's the end of it. Blanket bans on allergens such as nuts and shellfish are often inconsistently applied at schools. And now an international team of experts says they're not even effective at preventing anaphylaxis. When we've looked at the literature, the number of reactions, even though they're not great, uh, don't seem to be better in schools that ban versus those that don't. The experts recommend schools eliminate blanket bans on foods and allergen-free zones. Instead, they should develop a safety plan for each student with severe allergies, stock epinephrine auto-injectors, and train staff to prevent, identify, and treat allergic reactions. I think that a couple of things within these guidelines are going to be contentious and emotional. And people have been doing certain things for a very long time. Indeed, a group representing people with food allergies disagrees with lifting food bans outright. We do support food restrictions. You still have to have uh, these responsible oversights to be able to make sure that kids aren't coming into contact with what they're allergic to. The recommendations are just that, not compulsory. Many schools in Canada already stock epinephrine as well as educate staff. Paulino Senya says students are also part of the answer. A child with an anaphylactic food allergy always needs to be vigilant. Vigilance, regardless of whether there's a food ban or not. Vicadopia, CBC News, Toronto. Okay, so full disclosure here, I have a peanut allergy, which means I have a few questions for allergist and immunologist Dr. Zainab Abdurrahman joining us now. Uh, hey doctor, can you start perhaps just by speaking directly to those parents of kids with allergies out there whose, whose initial reaction to all of this may be, isn't this potentially really dangerous, uh, reintroducing this kind of allergen this way, at least proposed? I think it's important for everyone to have a moment and really think about this. So at this time, most of the schools may have removed things like peanut and tree nuts from the schools. But this entire time, all the other major food allergens have been allowed. So that means egg, milk, wheat, fish, shellfish, sesame. Those have all been in the school system. And other children have been able to bring those into the classroom, even though those are also major food allergens that children are often also allergic to. And there is not a huge you know, increase of you know, anaphylaxis in the school setting due to these other foods. Right, but, so, but isn't one of the risks with peanuts that, that it could be in the air, that, that just being in the vicinity of someone eating a, a peanut butter sandwich is potentially dangerous for someone with a life-threatening allergy? Actually, with peanut in something like peanut butter or, um, you know, a peanut cookie, not so much, actually. Those, um, that food allergen doesn't actually aerosolize very easily. It would be an issue if you took your child to a peanut processing plant where they are actually removing the skin off of the peanuts, and that will actually aerosolize some of the protein into the air. Mm. And so in that setting, it would be. But in a normal setting, in a peanut butter sandwich, in a cookie, in a food that's prepared that they're just opening up and eating, not so much a huge um, concern from that perspective. Okay, that, that, that's all the time we have, but, but that's helpful. Dr. Abdurrahman, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.